Hi, I'm Jess Cope and I directed Drive Home and The Raven That Refused to Sing. Uh, both The Raven and Drive Home were based on uh, short stories that Stephen and Hyde had written for the album. And then when Stephen asked me to do the music videos, uh, he said, you know, I can base them on the stories or I can develop them. We had done The Raven and Drive Home was dangerously similar in that respect. Um, so we wanted to do something a little bit less supernatural and maybe a little bit more psychological because it's all about a guy who uh, represses his memory after a really traumatic experience watching his partner uh, die. So we wanted to add this kind of uh, ominous dark figure which acts as a supernatural element in the video. Um, and this is actually his unconscious uh, self um, stealing away all of the mementos that might remind him of, uh, of his lost love. Oh man, it's ace working with Stephen. Uh, because this is the, our third, well, my third video uh, working with him, um, I think we've kind of gained some trust and he's brilliant at the beginning of a, of a project because he's really involved in the initial stages when it comes to writing the treatment and getting the ideas out there. But um, after we've agreed, or after he's like kind of uh, signed off the idea, he just trusts me to get on with it. And throughout the project, we send him stills and we like keep him you know, involved in what's going on. But he's very hands off when it comes to the making of it. And I think that's really good for somebody like me. Well, we've always, uh, well, this is the last two videos we did, it, we've worked with a really small crew and it's always been the same people, people I, I know and trust and it just it's simpler that way and we've also always filmed it at home. Um, but with this one it was a bigger project and we, uh, we wanted to expand on what we'd done before and because we were doing two different styles of animation we wanted to kind of like push the boat a bit and uh, so we got in VFX guys. Um, a guy called Hassan who did VFX in New York, another guy called Venki from India. I've done much less animation than before and more directing. We had three animators on this one. I think all in all we had 15 crew, crew members. Because these stories have already been written and Hai has done a lot of like the concept work for them in the book, uh, that's what kind of uh, inspires me initially and um, and because he's already developed the characters I mean Stephen's always given me the choice of do I want to kind of develop my own characters or would I like to like build on his and it's always the latter I think because he nails it. It's important that I bring something to the table on it with regards to the way that the film looks and I think because I'm making it that's always going to happen but um, What's more important is I stay true to Hire's original stuff because it is always so inspiring. Uh, both of the videos took four months. Um, a drive Home was pro probably the hardest one, but we did have a bigger crew on that one. I aimed to make all the cutout puppets for Drive Home in a month, but the stop motion puppets then had to be made whilst we were animating the cutout stuff. And Tofu was editing uh, right from the get go. As soon as I started animating, he was having to kind of put things together because it was such a long song and a big project. Our aim at the start of Drive Home, and I think for The Raven, because they were, they were both almost eight minutes. Uh, was 11 seconds a day and we had two months to animate but for dry phone we ended up getting in two, two more animators so that the, the you know the, the amount of seconds we had to do we went down to seven but it was still like constant work it, we started in the morning and worked up until the early hours of the next morning well they both actually were difficult in their own kind of in their own right because um, the Raven was the first cutout animation I'd ever, ever done and we were learning the whole way and we'd set ourselves impossible goals. Um, we'd also animated a lot of the backgrounds with the characters and unfortunately when you do that you have shadows creeping in and 
Um, and if something goes wrong, you have to start the shot over again. With a bigger team, it means you've got a lot more to keep your eye on and you've got to, you've got to really kind of get into the director's role and you've got to be on top of everything. And for someone like me, that's really difficult, especially if I'm not doing the lion's share of the animation. It was quite a, you know, kind of a learning curve for me. Well, for two reasons. Um, the one being we had to somehow tie in the two styles of animation and um, the easiest and the cheapest way of doing this was to kind of make the world out of the same kind of texture and newspaper just seemed to be the best option. I don't know how I don't know how it came about. I think maybe I might have been a little bit inspired by um, my uncle who who makes these uh, weird animal heads out of um, wire frames and then he covers them in like magazine print and they always look really cool to me and they've been around for years. My friend Ellie Cross who animated on on this uh, on Drive Home she had made um, a film years ago and she used books for this for a little cat of puppets so it's kind of I'm just a big fat copier really. <laughs> but it was mainly to unify the two worlds. I think there might have been a little bit of unintentional symbolism in there because uh, Stephen's original story was all about this man who is trapped in this world of letter writing um, to his lost love, um, but he has no address to send them to. And, and if you look in the house, there's just stacks and stacks of letters. So I think it just kind of tied in with that story. This story has a lot of kind of flashbacks in it or uh, memories of this guy's past and we wanted to do something different uh, to the usual way of like representing a flashback. We decided to kind of do two different styles of animation and the, we made the cutouts, uh, all of the cutout animation is representing things that have happened in the past and all the stop motion animation represents the present time because it gives, it, it, gives, it feels more real and that's really the reason why. To clear away all the, the stop motion puppet was a, a just a metal armature that Beth Dupe um, put together. She made a fiberglass head and just pasted just pasted real newspaper on her. And this, the, 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 his clothes obviously couldn't be real newspaper. That was all material that we'd printed the newspaper print onto. And um, I made the glasses out of um, just wire and acrylic plastic that I'd that I've um, filed down and sanded to give it like a little smooth finish. When I first kind of started Drive Home, my the one thing I wanted to do was animate with Vaseline. Uh, my friend Ali had done it before in her degree film and I just thought, thought it looked great. The Vaseline was literally just painted on, on glass, um, on a multiplane, like on the Raven. Um, and it was just manipulated with a paintbrush and toothpicks. For one of the scenes, we made it rain, uh, so that it could it could be a little bit more crude. Um, but all the night, the shots at night, that was all manipulated with a paintbrush, and and then we did ask add a little a few effects in post production to kind of smooth it out a bit. But that's how the water was made. I think it had a quite nice effect. So all the animation filmed against a, a, a green screen and our compositor and our editor, Tova Holland, he, it was his job to kind of put it all together and it was a massive job um, in the end, but I thought it was ace. I'm very fortunate in the way that I've got a very artistic family, so we got my mum on board for a week and all the all those little, um, little chairs and books and uh, tables, I made the typewriter, but everything else my my mum made um, uh, and, and Beth Dupe. And the first stage was hide at all the storyboards and we passed that along to our, our editor Topha Holland and he timed the storyboards to the music. There was one point, one major point that we had to hit um, with the with visuals and the, and the sound and that was Guthrie's um, solo and that's the point where Charles hits the water and that was the only thing that we wanted to kind of get bang on um, but everything else uh, we just kind of trusted our editor to, to kind of time it to the music. After we had developed a treatment that Stephen was happy with 
Um, it just seemed the most perfect person to get the storyboards was Hayo. He already knew the look of the character, he already knew the story, and he loved the development we'd made to it. So um, I passed the treatment on to him and got him to do the most incredible storyboards. And from that, we, pa we, um, we kind of made any kind of changes and passed it on to our editor, and he timed it uh, to the music. And then basically we'll work from this animatic um, throughout the project. We have uh, shot lists and everything is timed. And animatic is so important um, because you can't overshoot animation, you don't have time. Well, we filmed all the animation uh, on a Canon DSLR and uh, we used an animation software called Dragon Frame, which I'll swear by this software, it's awesome and I'd recommend it to any any animator. It was edited using Final Cut Pro and all of our, uh, our compositor used After Effects to do all the compositing and you know, any kind of special effects. Well, I've had an idea since 2007 for a feature film, uh, which I've been developing over the years um, and I would love for it to be scored by someone like Stephen. It would have to be done right, it would have to be done with the right budget, so you never know. You'll just have to wait and see.